know how much information can be stored basically so if you miss something you can see you know what you can you can store whereas if you do the software UERTs uh, you have to make sure that your timing is correct or that you've got some different devices in place to uh, make sure you don't miss any data and we'll be taking a look at that uh, this is the first of maybe a couple videos and I may even do a actual hardware video an actual video on putting this together and actually showing you what you get uh, on the screen of a computer and uh, how this actually will go together because there is two two different ways of doing it the hardware and the software UARTs and software is a little more complicated like I said because you gotta create your own buffers you gotta put your own devices in place to make sure that nothing gets lost in the transaction basically but um, Harbor URT is a little bit easier because, like I said, it's got built-in hardware buffers that hold the information. So that way, if you're not quite there yet, it will uh, it'll still hold the information for you, so that whenever you're ready to collect it, you can. So let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that. Here we go. All righty, now we got our we got our schematic that we're going to be dealing with. Alright, so basically you've got your uh, 8, I'm using the 876 which is part of the same family that was the one that was in the in the library of components I had without me having to rebuild the component but basically it's exactly the same architecturally exactly the same. Um, here's our 7805 voltage regulator we've got our two noise capacitors and our input power and our output power got our mem clear tied to a high through our 10k uh, got our got our ground and VDD. So now what we do is we come over here and here's those charge pumps I was talking about. Basically, you've got your uh, one microfarad capacitor uh, between one and three, between four and five. You got one uh, coming out of your V plus here and going up to a high through the capacitor. Oh, and make sure you keep the polarities on the capacitors. It does it does matter. So make sure you keep the polarities uh, correct. So you've got the positive, you know, going to the positive and the negative going up to the positive here. And then you've got from here, this is actually coming in the negative ter terminal or the the cathode and coming out the anode to ground. So make sure you keep polarities correct on your capacitors. And then see down here we have the the two pins for power and ground for this system. We've got a one microfarad capacitor hanging off it to ground for noise suppression. Now we get over here and now we're starting to we're going to deal with those those deals. Remember the back here if we look at it our T1 in and T2 in is our transistor or TTL logic in and our R1 out and R2 out is our TTL CMOS outputs and similarly on the other side is the PC stuff so what we've got is we've got our T1 in is traveling out and going in to RC6 which that is what we are going to make our transmit so basically 6 is going to be transmit comes out goes into the T end then we've got same on the same side here for our TTL logic we've got R1 out this comes out and goes to C7 which we will make our receive so 7 is receive 6 is transmit now on the other side when this comes out we want to match up we want T1 in to go to T1 out so now your T1 out comes out pin 14 and travels over here to pin 2 and if you look at RS-232 serial ports uh, for a PC just standard pin configuration the receive pin is number 2 and then similarly then the transmit is pin 3 travels around and goes to the R1 in and then that's our R1 in R1 out goes out and that's your receive so receive goes to transmit transmit goes to receive basically make sure you don't accidentally hook it up receive to receive and transmit to transmit nothing damaging will happen it's just you you obviously you know if receive isn't going to transmit then you're not going to pick up any data so make sure you get that crossover in there and then another uh, major thing is taking uh, your pin 5 which is your ground for your PC and connecting it to the ground of your system now I had um, I've had uh, a computer a PC reseller give give me um, kind of some heartburn over this he was stating that uh, you never want to hook the ground up 
uh, between the PC and the uh, and you know some external peripheral device, and he said that it would it would you would take a chance on damaging the port and. This this is true in some extent. Basically, if you yes, if if the peripheral device ever has some sort of a um, let's say a short to ground or maybe even um, doesn't have any type of surge suppression and there's a lightning strike that somehow travels through the peripheral system and leaps onto the ground, y you could take a chance of you know damaging the serial port. However. Um, if you and your design, you you make sure that you if you're going to be in an environment that deals with um, lots of transient voltage spikes and basically major power quality issues, then you're going to want to make sure as the designer to employ some sort of transient voltage suppression or you using you know TVS diodes or or you know uh, oh some some sort of suppression device, some kind of you know arrestor type device like an MOV that's what I was sitting here trying to think of a, a metal oxide varistor those those work very well against uh, transient voltage spikes what they do is they'll actually short uh, to ground during a high transient situation and get that high current away from uh, whatever you're wanting to protect with it and they work very well um, very fast I mean within microseconds and actually they may even work a little faster than that I'd have to check a data sheet but they're very quick but metal oxide varistors or the TVS transient voltage suppressing uh, diodes you would have to employ in your system but for for our environment that we're going to be dealing with it's totally safe it's totally fine um, the thing is, is if you leave that ground off you will have uh, major trouble trying to get it, your system will be massively unstable because of the fact that you have no voltage reference anymore there's no way of knowing what actually is plus 12 volts because you're not you don't have anything to reference it from uh, so you basically you can connect one end of your meter but you can't connect the other end of your meter so your meter is going to show you know anything um, probably nothing, but it could show anything. So basically, all your vo voltages are floating if that ground isn't connected. So that actually is very, very important. But like I said, in the case that you know something could happen, basically on this end of the circuit, that could cause maybe some transient voltage to get onto this ground to maybe damage this. If you're going to be in an environment such as that, then you need to employ some different protective devices to make sure that you. Uh, protect the PC. But in my sense, I, I believe that if, if something's going to be that big of a spike that's going to leap onto the RS-232 port and tear it up, I'm pretty sure the computer's going to get smoked too. So in, in any case, it's, it's, it's whatever. I mean, I, I, I understand his concern. But as uh, so far as me, I, I've built many of these and had no issues. And they even are in industry and have no industry, have no issues. So well, that's basically it for the hardware. Very uh, simple, very uh, straightforward. Just uh, like I said, make sure you keep track of your which ones receive, which ones transmit. You know, make sure you get them crossed over when it gets to the PC, so that way you got uh, good communication. Um, and then, yeah, basically we're just gonna put this together and see how she does. Like I said, I may make a video where I actually actually have. Uh, it actually on a breadboard and show you how it's actually connected and show you it working and it functioning. Um, you can use Hyperterm, TerraTerm, and any other type of terminaling application to basically send this because that's all you're wanting to do. You're just wanting to send data out the 232 port. And I, I may even down down the road. I may even in this situation. I'm, I kind of want to spend a lot of time on this because this is actually very very cool. And I may even do some work with uh, Visual Studio if those of you that know um, Visual Studio and show you how to very quickly just write build programs that just write stuff out to the COM port, and that way you can kind of build some software that then interfaces with your hardware that you can build, which is which gives you some pretty cool flexibility and pretty cool stuff to do. So. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up before it gets too long, and we will be back with the software in part two of this. Thank you very much.